Hey guys, my name is Mike. I'm the Digital Wingman, and this is Grow Like a CEO. Now, the average CEO reads a book a week, and I'm going to help you get that much closer by breaking down the best marketing, business, and productivity books every single week so you don't have to. Now, this is episode four of Blue Ocean Strategy, where we're finally bringing together all of the research into a single index. So let's get started with sequence and utility. Now getting the sequence right is all about mapping your progress. Now what we've done so far will help you make sure that you've found your blue ocean and that you're ready to get started moving on it. So step one for this is determining buyer utility. Is there exceptional buyer utility in your business? Is there a compelling reason for the mass of people to actually buy what you're selling? Step two, right, is your pricing set up for the mass market? Right, can, you prove, pardon me, can your product or service be bought by everyone without being the cheap product on the shelf. Step three, cost. Right? Can you remain profitable at this price point? And if you can't, it's either time to ditch the idea or start looking for cost saving measures. Now remember, in a blue ocean, you're looking for a jump in value for both you and your buyers. So if you can answer yes to all of these, then you have yourself an actual blue ocean. If you had to answer no to any of these, it's time to go back it's time to do a little bit more rethinking about your product itself. So part two, all right, we're gonna look at six different stages of the buying cycle. Now, most of you are already familiar with the funnel steps or the customer journey, all right? This is a different cycle that's going to begin at the purchase of your product, no awareness and no consideration stage. Mapping out these steps will help you make sure that when customers purchase from you, there is a completely transparent and natural process. No strings attached here, just a nice, simple process that, if done well, won't register in the minds of your buyers as an individual process. It'll just flow from purchase to satisfaction. All right, in each of these stages, you're gonna have to make sure that you and your customers understand the process. That's what I mean when I talk about transparency. So in step one, we're gonna look at purchase. Now, how long does it take to find the product needed? Is there a place of purchase? Is your place uh, attractive and accessible? So that's brick and mortar or your website and how secure is the transaction location? How quickly can you make that purchase as well? What we're looking for here is ease and comfort of purchase. Unless this is a street level drug deal, you should be considered uh, each one of these following questions to make sure that it's a pleasant process as possible, as pleasant a process for the user. Sales come from trust and trust comes from a lot of external factors. Now step two, delivery. How long does it take to get the product after purchase? How simple is the process to unpack and get started? Think about Apple's philosophy at this point. Right out of the box, it works. Do buyers need to arrange their own delivery and what's the process like? Is it simple or is it a pain in the ass? We're an insta -gra instant gratification society right now and if you have a longer delivery period after purchase, what you can do as a company is prepare them for the arrival of the product itself. All right, can you have quick start guides, package tracking, extra value that you can deliver for the product? The longer the time period between purchase and delivery, the lower the excitement about the product itself and the lower your brand drops in the mind of the user. So it's your job to find a way to stay on the top of their mind. Use your email to the best of your ability. Now step three, use. Does your product require training to use? This is my software as a service folks. What's the shelf life of the product if it even has one? How effective are the features and the function? So think about your competitors here. Is your product overpowered for the average user? Think Photoshop for grandma. She doesn't need all those extra pictures just to take care of her grand, just to take pictures of her grandkids. All right, so take a little bit of time to understand the actual use case of your product here. If you're overpowering your product with features and options, maybe it's beneficial to focus a little bit more, to niche down, get rid of some extra features. Now step four is your supplements. Do you need other products and services to make this work? and work well. Now, how costly are they? How much time do they take? How much pain do they require? How much pain do they cause? How easy are they to obtain? All right, this is the batteries not included at this step. Your product does not exist in a vacuum here, so make sure to take into account what it takes to make sure that someone gets the most out of your product on a daily basis. Now, step five, maintenance. Does this product require external maintenance? How easy is it to maintain? and upgrade the product itself. How costly is the maintenance as well? Now, think back to the last car that you bought from a dealership, or better yet, the last phone that you purchased. Luxury car dealers always have 
their own mechanics and shops for specific reasons, the parts. They can afford to stock the right luxury parts because that's their only clientele. The average mechanic, on the other hand, has no need to stock luxury German parts because he sees all manner of vehicles. Right? He needs to be prepared for mass appeal. You, on the other hand, probably don't have to be. Now, what do you need to have available or at least accessible for your users to make sure that the product is usable for its entire lifetime? And lastly, step six, disposal. Does this product create waste of some sort? How easy is the product to dispose of and how costly is it? Are there any legal ramifications to the actual disposal? All right, now, if you have an information product, this generally isn't gonna be your area. For a physical product, however, you have some options here. So ask yourself if the product can be recycled at all. What can extend the use or the lifetime of this product and create extra value for your users? It's a big issue right now is how can your product continue to live? All right, if you have all these bases covered, you can move on to actually developing your pricing strategy now. All right, so let's talk strategic pricing. Now the goal at this stage is to develop a pricing model that attracts buyers in large numbers, but also helps you retain them. All right, we wanna make sure we, get, we keep these people coming back to us. So the question here to ask is, uh, your offering price set up to attract buyers, massive amounts of buyers that have a compelling ability to pay for it. So when you combine utility from the first step and strategic pricing here, this will actually keep people from imitating your product. So it behooves you to do both of these. So step one, identify the price corridor of the mass. All right, look at products with different forms, but the same function. Look at products with different form and function, but the same objective. All right, now I know that's a little confusing. Go back to video two and make sure you cover looking across industries and alternatives, because that's what we're gonna be looking at here. The goal here isn't to pursue pricing against uh, the competition, but to pursue pricing against substitutes and alternatives. Think Southwest as they tried to outprice the, the price of uh, driving. Now had Ford pursued uh, a better carriage, all he would have done instead of creating the Model T is doubled the amount of carriages on the road. So your goal here is to create a new space. Now if you've got utility and strategic pricing, now you're ready to talk costs. And that brings us to step three. This is our cost model. Now your goal in a blue ocean is to maximize profit potential by starting with strategic pricing and then deduct its desired profit margin from the price to arrive at your cost. All that means in a nutshell right, is you need to figure out what you wanna earn and then move on from there. This is gonna force you to innovate around your product costs, partnerships, and so forth. Now, to do this, there's three levers that you can pull, three ways you can achieve this process. All right, streamlining your operations is number one. Can the raw materials be replaced by unconventional or less costly materials. Think back to our bus story about steel buses versus, uh, oh my, fiberglass. All right, they were substantially cheaper, lighter, and easier to repair. It vastly improved the utility of the product. Partnering. Now, IBM has a practice of lending their servers to businesses in exchange for equity in the company, all right? which most cases is substantially higher than that of the actual cost of the machine itself. It's an investment process for them. And three, change your pricing model. At the beginning, tapes were relatively expensive, movies to produce. Blockbuster changed their pricing model by allowing for a rental instead of a purchase, bringing the costs to the consumer down substantially and allowing them to maximize their revenue from each individual rental. They made massive amounts of money for it. Altogether, this creates our blue ocean index, how well you built your ocean. It comes down to taking that information and asking yourself four yes or no questions. If you can answer yes to these four questions, you are ready to go. You are ready to move on this product. If you can't, it's time to go back. Number one is utility. Is there exceptional utility to your product or service? All right, so go back to the beginning of this video and look at those first six steps, and this will tell you whether or not you can say yes to this question. Do you have, does your product have exceptional utility? Price, number two. Is your price accessible to the mass of buyers? Are you right there in that middle ground? You're not the cheap one, you're not the expensive one. Cost, does your cost structure meet your target cost and profit? Are you getting your, your earnings off of it? And finally, adoption. Number four, have you addressed adoption hurdles for both users all right, and your own company up front? If you've gotten all the way here, you have found your blue ocean. All right, now you can start looking at the fun and creative ways to market this product. For that, you're gonna to wanna to go back and start building your narratives, right, and finding your outlets.